Mr. Moody, in resigning from the Democratic Alliance, is in fact running away from facing a very serious set of charges relating to an attempt to frame a political opponent in a sex for jobs scandal. This also allegedly involved attempting to bribe two young and vulnerable first-time councillors into giving false evidence. Mr. Moody was also to face a charge that he was involved in offering these councillors promotions on the candidates list for the 2021 elections if they cooperated in making false statements to smear the senior politicians involved. All right. Uh, for more on this, we're now joined via Zoom by DA National Spokesperson Rufilo Nseke. Very good afternoon to you, Rufilo. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here on SA Today. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to the viewers at home. Just as a start, Rufula, when a party leader with uh, so many years of loyal service uh, uh, resigns, surely that should be concerning uh, to the party, or at the very least some of uh, the members of uh, the DA. What do you make of Moody citing racism, amongst other issues, uh, of being what caused him to, to, to ultimately uh, resign uh, from, uh, from the party and from his leadership role in the party? I think when you look at the video that you played of the leader, you can see very clearly that the outgoing provincial leader is obfuscating responsibility because these charges are now against him. Ordinarily, we would be worried and concerned, but here's somebody where you clearly hear the charges against him, they are very serious. Yes, we cannot go into the details of the charges. All we can do is tell you what the charges are. Mm. And instead of waiting to go through the Federal Legal Commission, which is the disciplinary process of the Democratic Alliance, that same leader chooses to leave. And this is the very same leader who earlier has put his name in the hat to be the federal leader of the Democratic Alliance. And we have Congress coming up in October. Instead of saying, I've got evidence, let me go through the party processes, clear my name if I'm innocent, and then continue to run for federal leadership. He has now resigned suddenly. Well, so I think for well, us, we cannot be saying we're, we're worried because this is somebody who really had very serious charges against him. I know you can't go into the details of uh, the charges, but uh, perhaps you can go through them for us uh, very briefly yet again, as uh, your leader, John Steenhazen, did. And, and, and maybe you can let us know exactly when these uh, charges were, uh, in fact, instituted prior to or after uh, he, he put his, uh, his uh, ha head in the hat in, for, in terms of uh, wanting to be a leader of uh, the party. When exactly where were these charges? Uh, in fact uh, instituted let me put it this way the party has been dealing with these charges since march 2020 so the exact date of when mr moody was then served i don't have however the investigation has been happening behind the scenes it went to federal executive to say these are the recommendations for him to be suspended the federal executive felt it was not necessary for him to be suspended at that time mm. And then the next thing that happened is the resignation that took place yesterday. One of the uh, things that uh, John Moody said uh, during the time that uh, he was resigning, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm quite sure you you took a, quite a listen to, to what he had to say regarding his uh, resignation, I found it quite interesting that Moody said that um, he knows that you, and of course he means the party, that the party will uh, come after him, and he said that, uh, if the party does indeed come for him, he will expose more things. Is there uh, any concern regarding that uh, from uh, the party? Are there smolanyana skeletons, if you know, one can put it that way, Rufilwe? I quite frankly believe the party has nothing to hide. If Mr. Moody has skeletons, then I think he, it's, his, it's his prerogative to expose the skeletons he claims to have. Is that where you leave the answer in terms of the fact that the party is not worried about uh, what information Moody might have that might, uh, in fact, harm the party? I mean, you've, you've got a person who's been with the party for, what, over 20 years uh, that might be privy to some information that not all uh, South Africans are perhaps uh, privy to. The party has absolutely no concern regarding what uh, Mr. John Moody uh, could or would be able to, to expose. I mean, the, are these empty threats? Do you see this as, as an empty threat? I, I, you know what, I think it's disingenuous because the reality, I think he already knew what his moves were. Yeah. 
and to yeah. sit, continue sitting on the federal executive of the party, which is basically almost the top 30 leadership of the organization, where you're privy to very confidential, confidential conversations of the organization. Yes, of course, we must be worried, but we can't say we've got something to hide. We must be concerned that if this person is being very disingenuous by continuing to sit on this body when he knows that if these charges stick against him, mm. he will then jump ship and he wants to hold the party ransom. That is the concern. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ma'am, you know, he said that, uh, John Moody said that he no longer feels at home. And um, of course, I'm going to raise this issue of racism. And it's quite bizarre to me that most uh, uh, black leaders who leave the party uh, talk about racism within uh, uh, the party. But I want to talk about the issue of him saying he no longer feels at home. And I wonder if that's you know not an indictment on the current leadership. I mean, if, if the man has felt at home for over uh, 20 years and suddenly now saying uh, that he no longer feels at home, what's the issue? Issue or, or, or issues and now if you are to kind of uh, step back and look from from what he's talking about to be honest I go back to my original response of saying I think this is obfuscating responsibility you've got criminal charges not criminal charges you've got charges within the organization against you very serious charges mm. before you go and resign you had already put your name in the head to run for federal leader which is the highest lead person in the organization suddenly when these charges are tabled you you resign You've 22 years in the party. Mr. Moody has been a councillor. He's been a member of the provincial legislature. He's been the leader of the province and one a critical province such as Gauteng. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the, literally diverting the truth from where it stands. There are very serious allegations. Why would you want to then leave today? Why didn't in his 22 years try and tackle racism? He's been earning a salary as a DA councillor Ending a salary as a DA MPL. In fact, I'm sure you realize he was also the caucus leader in the Houting legislature, which is also a higher salary than any ordinary MPLs. Yeah. So yeah. when he was earning these salaries, why was he not dealing with the racism in the organization well, at the is time? There, is there racism in the party? I mean, you're a black leader within a black female leader in within uh, the DA. Is there racism in, in, in the party? I mean, as I've said, uh, uh, most uh, 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 black leaders within the party who leave the party end up talking about uh, this uh, racism, is there? I've been a member of the DA for 20 years. I've not been, I've never seen racism against me personally. And I know when there have been incidents of racism, they've gone to the FLC. And some of them have been dealt with swiftly. All right. And just in closing, then, is there concern about whether or not John Moody uh, might perhaps uh, take certain of his friends within uh, the party, his leaders within the party with him, wherever uh, that uh, he ends up? And I'm, I'm sure you know there's a lot of talk about him perhaps uh, joining hands uh, with uh, Musi Maimani or Herman Mashaba, for example. I mean, is there is there worry that uh, he might take some of uh, the prominent uh, faces that we're used to in the DA with him that might have uh, perhaps Perhaps been aligned uh, uh, to him or loyal, uh, perhaps to him as 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 a DA leader in Gauteng. Naturally, we are concerned. It would be arrogant of us to say that we are not concerned, especially when we've got an election looming next year. But what we're looking at is making sure that when we go into the elections, we've got people who are true to DA values, who know that the DA has is the only party that could potentially unseat the ANC mm. and steer South Africa back to economic viability. So yes, we are concerned. However, people have a right of association in this country. If they feel they don't want to be in the DA, people will, might join other organizations. And then those who share our values and believe that DA is the, with the party being standing for non-racialism will come on board and say, you know what, we can see what you're doing. You want to save this country, it's on its knees, and let's join. There are a lot of people that have been joining DA right now within, when you look at the lockdown and how the ANC has treated South Africans, people are starting to say, we are seeing the DA as a party of solutions. We are seeing the DA giving lockdown strategies around how we resuscitate the economy. We've seen the proposals you've made in government in the different legislatures where you are. 
Mm. Are there any plans at this point uh, regarding, you know, his uh, replacement uh, within Gauteng? Yes. Look, last night we had the DA had a provincial executive committee. If you look at, at the, the Gauteng provincial constitution, mm. a replacement was elected, Mr. Solim Simang. I'm sure you know him very well. He's the current caucus leader in the Gauteng legislature and used to be the mayor in Twane. And then later this month, we'll be having a provincial congress to elect the Gauteng provincial leadership. So for Sully is an interim leader, he will steer that. Yeah. But there's no yeah. vacuum because we've also got Mike Moriarty still there as the provincial chair for Gauteng and Bongani Gomi is the dep deputy provincial chair. So the, the ship continues to sail. There's no leadership vacuum. We are clear on our mission. Yeah. And we've got Sully, yeah. a very strong leader in the organization, who is now continuing on that role to take the party until we get to the leadership Congress I mean, in I think that was September. my point. That was, I think that was my point, really. You've now got um, uh, two now interim leaders in uh, prominent uh, positions in uh, uh, John Stiernes and, and, of course, uh, 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 Solly. And, of course, for this to happen at a time where you've got an interim uh, uh, leader, is, it, is, that wasn't very, that wasn't sort of tricky for you, if I can uh, put it that way. And is uh, Solly's position sort of set to be, or, or are you hoping for it to be uh, made uh, permanent? I can't say Soli will be made permanent. I think we must see if Soli is going to stand for provincial leader. I can't preempt an election before people put themselves out to say they're standing. That would be very Seems wrong. That he will, he won't he? All right. Okay, fine. Let's leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, Rufilwe, uh, for giving us uh, your time. Rufilwe Nseke, spokesperson of uh, the DA, ma'am. Thanks so much.